Hey y'all, welcome to the channel. I'm Task Force Bourbon. Tonight we have something special in store. We're going to be doing a toasted blind flight fight from what uh, is oftentimes considered as the uh, golden standard in the bourbon community for toasted bourbons. While there might be some exclusive ones out there, um, we're going to offer you all the opportunity to see which ones really stand out. Um, and for the most part, uh, these are fairly obtainable. <clears throat> so in that lineup tonight, we got Basil Hayden Toast. This is a fairly new offering from Basil Hayden, um, which is in the community known as a very, very sipper type bourbon at 80 proof. Um, Basil Hayden is no newcomer. It comes from uh, Jim Beam and is part of the small batch collection. <clears throat> so I'll set that there. We're going to go ahead and talk about toasted, toasted bourbons, what that is. And then a little bit about each one of these and then the tasting. So that's uh, par for the course when, when uh, tuning in the Task Force Bourbon. But up next in that flight fight is going to be <clears throat> Michter's Toasted Barrel Finish. This is an annual release from Michter's. Uh, fantastic offering. I rated it um, in my top 10 of 2021 bourbons of the year. So we'll see where that actually shakes out um, this year or in, compared to the other offerings on the table. Then next, this is probably the most premium op op offering on the table. That's Wild Turkey Masters Keep 1. So every year, they release um, an annual expression from the Masters Keep to be sort of their premium end, end of the line. And they do something different. Like one year, they did a bottle and bond aged 17 years. right? For, so they did a, a sherry cask finish. And another year, they got a whole bunch of different things. This year, surprise, surprise, is a toasted uh, oak finish. And then certainly, last but not least, is the Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel Finish. This is uh, up until, you know, recently for me, is, is, and I think for most, would be the gold standard for toasted bourbon. So <clears throat> we'll see what uh, happens when, when he comes into the, uh, the lineup here. But before we begin, as promised, we have to talk a little bit about toasted bourbon uh, and, and what that exactly is. But to do so, you got to talk about what bourbon is. Right, so bourbon has a few things that it has to be to be considered bourbon, right? 51% corn, made in America. You got the proof rule, so distilled at no, no, no higher than 160, end of the barrel no lower than 125, and bottled at no lower than uh, 80 proof. Um, or so earlier I said entry, entry no, no higher than 125. So <clears throat> there's, a, there's a few rules. One of those rules has to be aged in new charred American oak uh, container. Right. Oftentimes it's a barrel, um, but technically a container. Now, uh, with that being said, finishing is a very common thing that we're seeing nowadays. Oftentimes that refers to bourbons that were then secondarily aged in a container. Again, most likely a barrel that used to house a wine or, uh, or, or, or maybe a brandy, like a cherry finish or a sherry or a port finish. And that category of finishing bourbons does technically include toasted or double oaks uh, even, but it's sort of just on the line of that. And so uh, I think most bourbon folks do not consider this a um, finished bourbon for that sense. However, technically speaking, it is a finished bourbon. Um, and so <clears throat> oaks important in bourbon, right? Um, and what it, oak does is it gives anywhere upwards to about 80% of the flavors uh, and color uh, that you get and that we love in the bourbon. And when you go charring, you can do anything between a, a zero to a five char. So literally think they got the barrel, they set it on fire on the inside and char it. The, oftentimes you'll see number three or number four, which is around 40 to a 60 second char. Uh, and what that does, is it basically caramelizes those wood sugars. It gives you a lot of caramel type flavors and we can really get in the weeds here, but I already did so in my other video about double oak, uh, when I did a double oak flight fight. So, uh, I won't spend too much time there, but like it's charred brethren toasted is very close. Think instead of literally setting up that inside on fire, it's toasted. Like think about a marshmallow. You can be one or two camps, pun intended, where you got the people who like, like myself, I love to set that marshmallow on fire to a black crisp, or you could be the other camp of, I want it golden brown, I sit there, take a lot of time to get that out. All right, and so what and why uh, a company might do that is because what that does is, is, it, is it essentially releases some more vanilla type flavors, um, and imparts sweeter, sweet, some sweeter notes as well. 
um, and as well as some spicy accents uh, in addition to all those things. Now, uh, those sugars haven't had time to caramelize, so that what that's going to do is also going to make that whiskey a bit sharper on the tongue. Um, they don't impart as much uh, color as their charred brethren, um, but that's really already been accomplished uh, beforehand by aging it first in a charred oak, a new oak American barrel. Um, and these, by default, are less common in the industry. That's why you see like four. There's you know, a few more uh, others, like Down Home's got one, Penelope's got one that's pretty popular um, amongst, you know, a few others. But really, it's, it's not the norm in the bourbon community, and that's because it's a little bit more expensive, a little more time-intensive uh, to manufacture. Um, but, but it does bring out a lot of flavors. So as promised, uh, we'll go ahead and talk first about Basil Hayden Toast. <clears throat> so, like I said, this came out very recently. Um, it, uh, instead of rye, the mash bill does use uh, brown rice as a secondary flavoring grain, which is meant to give the bourbon a sweeter palate, and a portion of it is put into toasted barrels for a secondary finishing period after initial maturation to, quote, draw out notes of caramelized sugar and toasted wood, according to the brand. The finished bourbon is then blended with brown rice bourbon that has been aged entirely in level four char barrels before bottling. Quote, I love experimenting with different mash bills and have always thought a brown rice expression would be an exciting and fitting addition for a more approachable, inviting bourbon like Basil Hayden, Fred No said. And he goes on to say, Basil Hayden Toast and Little Book Chapter 4 <clears throat> are crafted from the same brown rice bourbon stream, he explained. However, the crucial difference occurs when a portion of the bourbon is placed into a secondary toasted barrel and aged for approximately two months before being blended back with the remaining brown rice bourbon, which has been rested in level four char barrels to create toast. So that's toast. Um, and again, it's a, it's a sipping type bourbon in the sense of where it sits proof wise, 80 proof, very, very approachable. You can drink Basil Hayden neat as you should really most bourbons that are good anyways. Um, but even if this wasn't at 80 proof, you could definitely do so. But um, I'm more of a full strength cast proof type guy if, you, uh, if I can help it. Well, we'll just go in line order here. Next up, we have the uh, Michters Toasted. Again, it's an annual release. So Michters used to be out of Pennsylvania, uh, but now they're situated in Shively, uh, as well as they have a second uh, Fort Nelson distillery located in the heart of Louisville. Um, so they had a three-year hiatus because they really couldn't keep up the consistency that they wanted for the brand image. Um, but they do provide a quote that says, we first launched our groundbreaking US-1 toasted barrel bourbon in 2014, and we followed up with the releases in 15 and 18. While we continue to experience whiskey shortages at Michters, we decided to use some of our bourbon stocks for this toasted offering so our loyal Michters supporters could enjoy it. Michters president Joseph J. apologize if I uh, pronounced this wrong, but Mag Magliocco said in a prepared statement. Um, at Michter's, we do a lot of experimentation as we pursue our goal of making the great, greatest American whiskey. The innovative work that our production team is undertaking on toasted barrel finishing is delivering remarkable results. Michter's master distiller, Dan McKee, stated. <clears throat> so Michter's master of maturation, Andrea Wilson, establishes the protocol for the toasting of the barrels and aging of Michter's US-1 toasted barrel. To make this release, the distillery starts with fully matured barrels of US-1 small batch uh, bourbon and transfers the whiskey into a second barrel made of 18 month air dried wood for additional aging. Um, so the second barrel is undisclosed as far as how long it's been toasted, but it uh, has been toasted and not charred. Um, okay, and then we'll move down to the Wild Turkey Masters Keep. Again, another annual release, <clears throat> but um, this one is from Wild Turkey, where Jimmy and Eddie Russell have a combined 107 years, uh, probably 108 now, if I'm uh, you know, keeping my math right but it's a collaboration between father and son, Jimmy and Eddie, uh, who, shared the, who do share the, the role of master distiller. Um, this is their sixth limited edition expression in the Master's Keep collection. Uh, the first, which was like we talked a little bit before was a 17 year old whiskey launched in 2015. And it includes other offerings, which are named Decades, Revival, Cornerstone Rye, and then that Ball and Bond release we talked about too. Um, so this uh, combines Jimmy's love of mid-aged bourbons, eight to 10 years, with Eddie's passion for complex characteristics that come with bourbons aged longer. Eddie looks to find harmony and balance with the barrels used in his expression, serving as an ode to Jimmy's preference for a bolder mingled with Eddie's hand-picked 14-year-old whiskey. Both whiskeys come together for a second maturation using new oak barrels specifically toasted and charred in one of Eddie's favorite 
Timber Rickhouse is Tyrone G. <clears throat> um, so they go on to say, lastly, that Masters Keep One honors the tools, techniques, and traditions of my father handed down and the culmination of our shared love of bourbon. Jimmy instilled in me most rewarding lessons and success in work and life, passion, and discipline, and I'll always be grateful to him for setting me on this path 40 years ago. So that's that's Wild Turkey Masters Keep. And then, uh, again, uh, last but certainly not least, is Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel. This uses Heaven Hills uh, Mash Bill, 78% corn, 12% malted barley, 10% rye. Provides the base, and um, uh, they use Elijah Craig, which uses a number three char <clears throat> for a full 20 seconds less flame than the alligator neighbors. According to the company press release, quote, the process begins with fully matured small batch, which is dumped and then re-entered at barrel proof into a second Custom toasted new oak barrel, which is in, uh, designed in partnership with Independent Stave Company. If you haven't been, I definitely recommend checking those guys out. Made with 18-month-old air-dried oak, the finishing barrel is first toasted and then flash charred using a moderate toast temperature and toast time. An extensive research and development process resulted in a final barrel toast profile, bringing forward dark sugar flavors within the wood to create a balance of smokiness and sweetness after months of finishing. Um... <clears throat> Okay, so I had a little bit more I was going to talk about, <clears throat> but let's get to the best part of the evening. I'm going to go ahead and just scooch these guys just a touch over here, uh, just to keep it all this in frame. So I have uh, the flight lined up before me. It's kind of stuck to the table. I don't know why. Here we go. So the first one, let's go ahead and just move all these up more because I need to get these guys a little bit more in frame. So here's glass one. Here's glass two. Here is glass three, and here is glass four. I don't know what's in any one of these things, and the idea of tonight is not necessarily to dig out the most complex tasting notes, but rather a general sense of where and how they taste on my palate in terms of uh, quality in comparison with, with one another. So I'll go ahead and start left to right. Very light, um, but you know, actually, this uh, if I'm looking here, I think this is probably the lightest of the bunch, but but just barely. Glass four is a little bit too. So, and uh, just, just to go back real quick, Basil Hayden's an 80 proof. I don't even need to look. Uh, Michter's is a 91.4, the Wild Turkey is a 101, and then this is a 94, the Elijah Craig's a 94 as well. So, they're all sort of in the same well, minus. Minus Basil Hayden, I guess, but they're generally all kind of in the same same wheelhouse of proof. So that is a very light body. Uh, I hate to play the guessing game right on the very first sip. I haven't even touched the other three, but this is probably Basil Hayden. Um, not just the lightness of proof, but I can also get some of that brown rice uh, note in there. So I've had some from like the Jim Beam experimental line as well. <clears throat> And um, guess what? Surprise, surprise, that comes from Jim Beam. So um, probably not a far reach to guess that this would be Basil Hayden Toes. It's got a little bit of leather, a splash of orange zest, very subtle cinnamon. Um, so far, I'm going to move all these up. Right, I'm going to try to keep this like <coughs> flight moving because I wish I could see this better. Maybe I should move this down a bit. Right, there we go. Um, because, and I'll, I'll slouch over, so pardon my posture. But so far, and again, I, I got my own biases coming in, but I like the higher proof stuff, and this is not going to this is not going to work for me. Um, it's fine. It's well balanced, really. It's maybe got a slight uptick in like cinnamon spice at the end. But it's just it's just not doing it for me, um, especially when I know if I'm right that the rest of these things are going to swing right away, and and we'll go ahead and find out whatever this one happens to be. A lot, uh, you know, heavier nose right up front. Um, the color is definitely a bit darker. Um, while we know the rest are anywhere between 91 to 101 proof, <clears throat> but this looks like it's got some age on it. And 
the wild turkey i know right is got i think what we say a 14 year blended in there with an eight and a 10 year blend mictors i don't know i don't think if i if i said it i, I already forgot but i don't think it has any age statement on it i'm not seeing any on the glass here the bottle the elijah craig elijah craigs usually do some well sometimes they do but this one does not have an age statement on it either Wow, very smooth. I know that's the word you don't say. But I do get a bit of uh, that toasted oak right up front, whereas I didn't really get the toasted oak on the first one. I'm just, I'm just gonna start calling this basil, because, right? I think I know what that one is. But if I'm wrong, you guys can laugh at me. But um, this, uh, th this definitely has a, a healthier uh, amount of that toasted oak. There's some butterscotch and caramel kind of going on, mixing with that toasted oak. Really nice. This is a really balanced pour. It, everything's just really working really well together. Maybe a touch of, again, that cinnamon. <laughs> Maybe there's a shared commonality between all these. We'll find out here in a moment. Um, not that cinnamon's a rare tasting note on bourbons anyway, but so far these two both have like a little bit of baking spice pop on the end um, that gives it a little bit of heat. Uh, but 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 it's, it's working well, um, but but it definitely means that it's not a completely balanced pour Quick wash Move over to glass three um, It's like a more more depth again you got oak which again surprise anything that's been double finished right uh is gonna have some some oak on it but it's got like a nice fruity floral kind of note on the back end oh man so there's this note <clears throat> that I, I, I'm pretty familiar with Michter's Toasted. Uh, I get like a cinnamon raisin uh, bread and mixed with this oak, this toasted oak. <clears throat> this has, the glass one has a bit more mature flavor tasting oak. And if I'm, you know, not wrong here, then that note kind of stands out in terms of the cinnamon, you know, raisin bread. A lot of vanilla but that oak is super subtle I could almost not pick this out of being a toasted bourbon so uh, this is gonna be probably glass well so far it's glass glass three is glass three and it's gonna be well behind the glass number two not a terrible thing but um, it is what it is. I'm, I'm tasting for toasted oaks, not just bourbons. So glass four. That is an enjoyable nose. Um, so I just keep getting uh, comp, you know, notes and stuff on my thing. So I want to make sure I keep it present. That one's got more fruitiness to it. Uh, a lot more like brown sugar than all the rest. It, there's like a honey on the mid. And the toasted oak really happens on the, on the mid to the finish. And um, that's fine. But again, I'm out here for the toasted oak, you know? So, hmm. Oh, there it is. So I did a nice wash. And it was like, still that fruitiness, the butterscotch, or the, yeah, the, actually a little bit butterscotch, it's a brown sugar, it's more brown sugar. And then as I wash, it was like, you know, like, it was like, oh, wow, oh, shit. But it was short lived, but it was really nice. <clears throat> I wonder if glass two does that. Let me give it a better, 
Kentucky chew on this thing. And one thing you want to try to do uh, when you taste bourbons and when you experience these things, you know, a neat thing you can do is, <clears throat> so you ever picture a tongue where you see salt, you know, salty, sweet, umami, bitter, all that, you know, where it's on the tongue. So take a, take a look at the picture, Google one. Um, and then see how that moves. Where does it hit you on your tongue? And it will actually change where it hits, you know, from the open to the mid and the finish. It'll change. Maybe it starts in the front of the tongue and it finishes there. This kind of helps you, you know, uh, capture the experience. So, so far, glass two and glass three are, in fact, tied. Glass three is winning over glass one. Glass one is in last place. Easy day. Um, well, let's go back to glass two. We're going to try that Kentucky Chew to see if that same you know, puff of toasted oak happens to come on through. Yeah, it does, but not as aggressive as this one. But the toasted notes are probably a, a much more present throughout the entire, you know, pour. Whereas glass four, when I did it, experience it it was really aggressive in a really nice way um and i just wish it was more throughout let's see if maybe it comes back out here and as it's sitting here no it is throughout this one keeps changing it's got nice fruity caramel it's got a bitch tan uh, a, a bit tannic stuff that's happening on the back end which isn't my favorite part um but it's got more depth than this one so i've got to do it one last time i'm going to try to i'm not really going to try to get one last time to see which one i like better glass two or glass four um because i, I know where i sit with these guys i probably should just drink it one more just to see if maybe something magical happen we will we'll go ahead and give glass three another shot Man, that is like you just stuck your head inside like a Werther's, uh, I don't know, vat of Werther's. A lot of vanilla, not a lot of toasted oak. I feel like this is a great bourbon. It, it is really good. But if I'm here for toasted, this one's not going to make the, make the cut for me. So I'm going to switch over back to glass two. Nice toasted oak throughout. Balance, not as complex as glass four. It's got some really sweet, you know, flavors, but glass four somehow is I feel okay with it. I honestly think glass two and glass four are probably tied. Damn, there is that blast of toasted oak that I like. But this one's more balanced. Glass two is more balanced throughout. Because of the balance, because of the constant um, toasted oak notes, even though I like the toasted oak when it happens on glass four more, I think I'm going to go ahead and creep up just, you know, inch or mile kind of deal, in this, in this uh, case, an inch, over glass four. So we'll start last on the way up to see what came where. So glass number four, the least, the, the position number four is Basil Hayden. Can you see that? There it is. I gotta get a little angle. That light's pretty bright. No surprise. There's my shock face. All right, glass three was in third place. Nectars. Oh, so again, um, for me, that cinnamon uh, raisin bread kind of note really stuck out. Uh, but I am surprised because. I got to see what year this is because when I did the uh, review on the 2021, it was obviously 2021. Um, this was, you know, graciously provided to me through a fellow bourbon and local enthusiast who answered my call to help me, you know, fill this toasted flight fight. Something I love about the bourbon community. But this says on the side for the UK market, WB00387382422. I don't know what that means. I might have to do some more research to figure out what exact year this is. Nothing telling on the bottom. 
This doesn't exactly taste like uh, the 2021 I had, so maybe it's not. But um, it, it definitely has a, a familiar note from the other uh, from the one I did taste. So this is what matters most, right? <clears throat> Glass four is wild turkey. So that means, guess who won? Elijah Craig. Elijah Craig won. Well, for me, Elijah Craig, and I think for many, Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel has been the gold standard for a toasted bourbon. And so that should probably come as no surprise to those tuning in, you know, seeing Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel beat out all the others. However, I will comma and say that it didn't quite beat out Wild Turkey Masters Keep 1 because that was a super close photo finish where I think, depending on the week, I did a blind flight tomorrow, the Wild Turkey might... I might have a, a palate that wants that a bit more, and I could probably see that Wild Turkey won winning over the Elijah Craig Toasted. So I, I think either one of those, you're not going wrong. The Mictors Toasted, I think whatever year I got here, just didn't quite hit the nail on the head because the one I had from 2021 um, was phenomenal. And um, I definitely want more of it. The Basil Hayden, it's just too low of a proof. But it's really well balanced, and again, that brown rice is super, super present. It's very sweet on the sugary kind of side of that house of sweet. A lot of vanilla. And it's just, you know, almost, I don't get nearly no toasted. I'm sure the toasted part that they're aiming for is maybe that more mellow approach. Um, as opposed to like getting like the toasted f oak flavors. Or maybe I'm wrong. But that's what's happening in, on my, my palate. So if you've had one, two, three, four, all of them. You know, I'd be really curious to see what you all think. And, uh, you know, if you've had another toasted bourbon that you would recommend, try out, leave a comment below um, and uh, share it with the community. That's what the bourbon community is and why it's so great. So, you know, until next time, I'm going to go ahead and say cheers and hope you enjoy. That's delicious. Well done, Elijah Craig. Heaven Hill.